Life of Tai, Penguin Problems, Chapter 5. At school, when it's time for recess, I have to play with Taylor because Lexi's grouchy at me. She's grouchy because I'm not wearing any rubber bands. I don't have any in my pockets either. Did you forget? Lexi demanded when she found out. I don't want to do rubber band guns, I told her. Let's do something else. I don't want to do something else. We could be boingies, I said. She made a sound like being boingies was dumb when she's the one who invented boingies. Well, we both did. Then she went to find Breezy. That's why I'm stuck with Taylor. He says, let's do punny arms. I say, I don't want to do punny arms. He says, then I'm going to put you in a headlock. And he will, because he has before. And if he puts me in a headlock, I'll have to kick him in the shin. And then I'll have to scramble up and run. Then I'll have no one to play with. So fine, we do punny arms. We draw our arms up into our sleeves so that our elbows are inside our shirts and the only parts sticking out are our hands. We slap each other with them. And I laugh. Punny arms can be fun, which I forgot. Lexi is over by the fence with Breezy. Even so, I don't look at her. Well, sometimes I do. Now let's be robots, Taylor says. Robots in a robot war. He lands a good one on my shoulder. Thwack. Okay, only let's be something else instead, I say, because robots wouldn't have punny arms unless their maker made them wrong, and then they'd get thrown in the trash. We could be robots in a trash heap, but another idea pops into my mind. Let's be babies. Giant babies who can't even talk, and all they can do is go wah, 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 and flap their giant punny arms. Yeah, Taylor says. He turns his body sideways and swats me. Wah, wah, I'm a big dumb baby. Wah, I say. I swat his hand with mine. I'm a bigger, dumber baby. Better watch out or I'll poop on you. Tyler scoots sideways. He keeps flapping. If you poop on me, I'll poop on you, and pee, and stab you with a sword. Yeah, I say, well, I'll throw a pacifier at you, a yucky, gross, spitty one. But baby Maggie doesn't have pacifiers, but I did. Mom says I had a zillion different pacifiers when I was a baby, and I slept with all of them. She says I'd suck on one for 30 seconds, then spit it out and pop in another. Suck, spit, pop. Suck, spit, pop. I think it sounds very cute of me. Then when I turned three, mom told me I had to give my pacifiers to a new child. That was the law, she said. And I remember this part of the story myself. Only mom didn't really give my pacifiers to a new child. She just put them in a cup on the shelf above the refrigerator. She admitted it after teensy baby Maggie was born. Hmm. After school, I'll ask her to get them down for me so I can look at them. Taylor flaps his punny arms. Passies are for babies. We are ba babies, I remind him. He lunges close and thwaps me hard. My head snaps back and Taylor laughs. Taylor, stop, and I mean it, I say in a not-me voice. I think I taste blood, and inside of me is a big, hot, mad feeling, so maybe it's a mad voice. Super mad, because I don't like it when people laugh at me. Also, I might be getting teary again for the second time this day, and I really don't like people seeing my tears. You're a big, dumb baby, Taylor chants. You're a big, dumb baby. I could tell on Taylor. He'd have to run a lap around the playground. Instead, I walk away, away from him, away from everybody. 
I lean against the big gray trash bin and touch my tooth with my tongue. It moves. Taylor made my tooth loose. One of my top teeth. That one, that's in the exact front. Except, I have two front teeth. And Taylor whacked the one on the right, and now it wiggles. Ty, Mrs. Weber says, I jump. Where did she come from? I quickly wipe my eyes, hoping I'm not tear-stained. Are you hiding behind the trash can? Mrs. Weber asks. What? No, I just like it here. Ah, Miss Weber says. Well, can you please be Price's bathroom buddy? Price is standing next to Mrs. Weber. I didn't see him till now. He's holding the part of his pants where his zipper is, which I would never do, which I never did do, even in preschool. Um, sure, come on, Price. Inside the school, Price walks fast, but with stiff zombie legs. It's a bad pee, he tells me. I think of my morning pee, and I speed up my walking. We reach the boys' bathroom, and I say, we made it, yay. Price gazes at me. I swing my hand at the urinals. Go on, I won't watch. Price keeps gazing at me. His eyes are round and not like robo things eyes at all. Price, don't you need to use the bathroom? His forehead gets scrunchy, worried, and I smell a smell. Oh. All right, um, don't worry, I say. You stay here, I'll be right back. At the door, I glance over my shoulder. Don't leave. He sucks his lower lip and nods. He'll be tear-stained soon if he's not careful. I dash to the office and whisper in Mrs. Beth Still's ear. She is very nice and not mean at all and gives me a brown plastic grocery bag with spare pants and underwear in it. We ask parents to donate used clothing for just this sort of thing, she says. Back in the boys' bathroom, I hand Price the bag. He looks inside. There's underwear in here. And pants. Yep. Bob the Builder underwear. I peer into the bag. Sure enough, there's Bob in his yellow hard hat driving around the underwear in a dump trunk. A dump? Dump trunk. Ha. But Price is still worried. So I say, I like Bob the Builder. And they're clean. So yeah. But they're not mine. I know, they're loners. I show him the waistband of his underwear. They say Trinity Elementary, see? You wear them now and bring them back tomorrow. Oh, Price shifts his weight. What do I do with, um, that's a good question. What is he supposed to do with his own underwear and pants? I guess put them in the plastic bag, but go to the bathroom first. He turns bright red. I already did, which I already know. But I try to be nice like Miss Betsill. Go into one of the stalls, I tell him, because there are urinals and stalls in the boys' bathroom. Take your pants and underwear off and put the new ones on. Then put yours in the bag, and then we need to get back to recess. Price's face relaxes. Okay, he says. Okay, Ty. Within the stall, he makes preschooler sounds, grunts and mouth breathing and stuff, and examine my tooth in the mirror. Done, Price says proudly. He holds out the plastic bag. After a second or two, I take it. We both wash our hands. We go down the preschool hall, and I hang the bag on Price's hook. After that, we go back outside. Price runs off. Then he runs back and hugs me. Then he runs off again. For the rest of recess, I mainly just stand there. Lexi and Breezy walk by, and Breezy tosses her hair. She links her arm through Lexi's and says, Boys are so childish, don't you think? Lexi looks at the sky. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I think about Price, who is a boy. Breezy would definitely call Price childish if she knew what he did. But guess what? I'd rather play with Price than Breezy any day. I don't want to play with Price or Breezy, but if I had to, I'd pick Price.